Have you guys seen Demon Slayer? Oh, don't worry, I won't spoil it. But if you're an anime fan and you haven't seen Demon Slayer, what are you doing? Season two has just got me super hyped, so I'm really excited to be starting this Nezuko sculpture. Um, I'm going with a little bit of a smaller scale for this one. As you can see, it's roughly seven inches. So this one should be a little bit quicker to pump out and get this video out to you guys. So um, without wasting any more of your time, let's just get right into it. Okay, so we're starting off the sculpture as we always do with a nice sketch of the skeleton. Now I did this one a little bit differently as the arms and legs aren't connected. They're gonna be tied together to a spinal post. And that was to um, kind of seam together the neck and the body a little bit better. It'll make sense in a little bit. I also did something a little new with the face. As I started with the face, instead of doing it last like I normally do, I started with it because if I couldn't get the face right, I just wasn't going to do this project. And funny enough, I mean, on the first try I got the face down, which is like super new for me. It normally takes me a couple tries. Maybe if I did it once or twice more, I could have gotten it even better looking, but I think it still looks pretty freaking good. Like something I never do is sculpt the teeth, and I was able to um, get them in there pretty well. So. It's all about taking my time. I think my problem with some of these is like I don't want to do the teeth so I rush to hurry up and do the mouth and it just ends up not looking as good as it could have because I rushed it. So if you learned anything from this video it's to take your time on things. Okay, and now that we know that the face looks good, we can move forward with the project, right? So I got the skeleton on. I drilled a hole in the back of the face to attach it to the body with a just a standard drill. Works really well. Now I know she looks a little bit like an ant right now, but once I build up the muscles and a little bit of the body, it'll look less like an ant, <laughs> more like a person, more like a demon, I should say. Speaking of which, um, I'm making this video. I'm not going to spoil anything just for anyone who hasn't gotten a chance to watch the new season yet um i do recommend watching the anime it's really really good it's uh beautifully like animated it's very seamless it's very smooth a lot of the fight scenes are just magnificently glorious so i highly recommend checking it out if you like anime i mean even if you don't like anime um it's still a pretty decent uh watch very compelling backstory as well. Okay, and I'm just using my scraper tool here to uh, take away some of the bulk that I added. That tool is one of my best friends because sometimes I end up adding a little bit too much clay and it helps you take away a little bit without taking off too much. Like a knife takes off excess, like a lot. The, um, the scraper tool just takes off such a small amount. Alright, so for those of you who haven't watched it yet, obviously um, it looks a little funny why she's got one sandal on and one not on. Um, we'll just uh, chalk it up to being battle damaged. This is how she appears in the scene that I'm trying to recreate. So um, there's going to be some, um, we'll put this in quotes, not blood involved in the um, sculpture. Yeah, she stepped in red paint, so she's got red paint all over her foot which you'll see once I start painting.
Now, this is a part that I was a little worried about getting to because sometimes I can sculpt these like clothing pieces and they look okay, and sometimes they like it just looks like a piece of clay, like it doesn't look like anything. So I had to take my time and add some, um, as you see here, these uh, worms of clay, uh, and basically I'm gonna blend those in, and it should give the effect that the clothes are being like folded wrinkled and stuff. Now I created that without using a reference picture so hopefully it translates a little well. Um, it's not going to be super realistic obviously if I draped a piece of cloth over a chair and mimicked the look it would um, have a more accurate representation but time, uh, time constraints you know. Alright, and that stuff that I was spreading on it is, in fact, Bake and Bond. Um, that's, it's wonderful, it's used to uh, get any sort of clay to stick together. Kind of like, you know, you've got glue for paper, you use Bake and Bond for clay. And depending on the type of clay, it can really help stick uncured clay to cured clay, or uh, vice versa. Okay, and the reason I'm able to put these in the back of the head, obviously, is because the clay is uncured. I had the idea in my head to drill holes into the head initially, after it was baked, and then put the hair pieces in, but it didn't seem uh, as efficient as what I did here, which I think worked really well. And I completely left out the um, base coat painting for the skin. Because, as you can see here, I'm trying something new, guys. I'm using an airbrush gun, which I haven't done before. Um, I had an airbrush laying around, but I never got the compressor for it. I finally decided to get a compressor, and let me just say I'm super happy with the purchase. Like, it makes blending things so much easier, and uh, I feel like the clay layers, before I was doing it a little too thick, with this one, it's very hard to lay the layers on thick because you water down the clay to put it into the air gun so um, it gives you a nice even layer obviously it takes multiple coats so one little coat isn't gonna cover everything but it works really well for blending There's the red paint I was talking about. <laughs> and just look at the pink on the kimono, how there's like little purple hues uh, in the recessed areas. And my stupid hand's in the way, but um, I'm blending the orange tips of the hair into the black, like pretty much with ease. Like with paint, you need multiple, multiple layers uh, to get that desired effect, and I was just able to do it so fast. and. Instead of doing a spray varnish like most people, I do a coat of Mod Podge and she's complete. Let's roll the action shots. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to my sculpt process of Nezuko here from Demon Slayer the Entertainment District Arc. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and if you liked it enough, drop a like. And if you really liked it, hit the sub button. Um, I plan on using the airbrush for more projects in the future. It was my first time using one and I'm pretty happy with the results so I'm going to keep using that going forward. So, um, see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>